This is Matt for Boxing Social in association with William Hill and Empire Fight Store. Delighted as always to be joined by Michael Conlon. Slick, obviously we couldn't talk after the fight for obvious reasons. You've had a few days now to sort of digest what was obviously a heartbreaking defeat for you, but you've had a few days. How, how are you sort of feeling about things now? Uh, listen, I'm still devastated. Um, I'm probably feel a little bit of with regret. Um, as it wasn't me in there, I didn't. I didn't perform. I didn't. I didn't turn up on the night and and had an off night. So, um, that's probably uh where I'm at. What happened in there? Because all week your mentality was so focused. I've seen you in the past four fight weeks, and you're always genuinely quite calm and focused. And what will be will be, but you're always ready. Mm-hmm. You're always in shape. I remember yeah. I saw the first round. And what sticks in my memory is your face reddened very quickly. It was almost like it either yeah. you on the nose or something had happened. You were squinting with your eye. I heard you reference something about your eye in, in the locker room. What what actually happened in there? Why was it not why was it not you in there? No, nah, listen, even from the first round, even how I started the box, I think I started the attack. I don't know why. Um you know, I think I think I also put an awful lot of pressure on myself. I was saying that you know, it was probably my last chance and shit like that when like saying everything was right and this and just adding unnecessary pressures and it's not it's not the last kind of chance. Obviously I go game thirty one, I'm still fresh and not and like I seen people saying it was a bad knock and stuff, it wasn't a bad knock the talking and I was getting up on the talking and and rightfully so it was a good call because Adam knew I wasn't at the races. He knew it wasn't there, and he said in the room before, if you don't fucking change what we're doing, I'm going to stop this fight. So, um, yeah, I understood the talk coming in. I thought it was right. But what happened was, mate, the game plan was out the window. I, I don't know what it was. It may, I, I honestly, I can't put my finger on what it was, but it, I just I didn't stick to anything. Didn't follow no game plan. Tried to go to war from, from round one. When, that's not her eye box. Everybody knows that's not her box. And, I think it was evident to see, you know, I was the one attacking instead of counter punching and, and you know, it's looking back on that, you go, Fuck me, why did I do that and why did I do this? But I suppose this is boxing and, and listen, people have off days and out of all my fights that was an off day. That was that was just a complete off day and you know, I'm not taking anything away from Lopez but because he was fantastic on the night, hundred percent, no doubt about that. But at the same time it wasn't. It wasn't me. Why? Why do you think that was? And I, I say that because you're somebody who leaves no stone unturned. And I know that's probably why a defeat like this hurts you yeah. quite a lot, rather than just a little bit. Because you literally leave it all in the gym. Like you, you, you put every ounce of effort in. You can tell how much it means to you. Do you think that, like you mentioned there, the pressure aspect of it? Although you always say, "Look, I've had pressure since day one. It's always been a pressure." Mm-hmm. Cause you think. You think it eventually it sort of it may be caught up to you, and that things in the fight it blocked any game plan out that you were supposed to have. What do you think that played a part in it? I think it probably had something to do with it. Yeah, I think pressure definitely did. I think this time maybe not not so much the pressure and 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 the of fighting or or any like other fighting for the title. I think it was just me saying was well, his last chance alone type shit, and this is all. This is it, and. Yeah, in terms of the preparation, I, I can't complain. The preparation was fantastic and I'd done everything right, you know. Before I fought Lee last year, like I ended up having COVID and stuff before the fight. So obviously I had I was fucking fuming about all out there, but like and that was that actually probably made it a little bit easier to deal with at times. But this one has been harder to deal with because I'd done everything right and I just didn't show up. And what? that and that's all that's all, I, that's all I can say. It was like it was just I fucked up. Um I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what it was whether it was too much expectation of myself or pressure on myself or, or, or just had an off night. That's 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 all I can think of at the minute. It was just an off night. Yeah, because I think I think in boxing, and I talked about this the other day, and you put something quite significant on your on a post last night, you know, one bad night what defined me. In boxing now, we have fans and it's not really their fault if they're casual or whatever they are, but if you go 30 and 0, you're avoiding, you're ducking everybody and blah, blah, blah. But fans are like, we want it back to the old days, you know, fight, fight, fight. But then you take a loss and it's, 
oh, he's done, he's finished, that's not good enough. And it's like, how many times do we see people take a loss and bounce back? I mean, you mentioned Lee Wood. Lee in his last yeah. fight prior to this just got, you know, completely done by Lara. Yeah. And earlier on in his career, obviously, you had you had him down. And on another night, that gets stopped. I think, was it Gavin McDonald that had beat him? And, yeah. and look, look where he is now. And I just think we're always so quick to, to write people off. Do you think now that you've had a few days to sort of let this sink in that you're in a sort of a better a headspace to sort of think, you know what, I can dust myself off and go again. Yeah, yeah, I think you no know, now that the face done and everything is kinda of moving on and life just continues as normal. You no, know, it doesn't stop. Nobody as much as you think the people care and the world cares, nobody gives a fuck really. Um and life moves on. It doesn't doesn't have for no one. It's like when you die. The world continues to move, it doesn't it doesn't stop. So for me, you know, after the fight, I was like, fuck this, you know, can't be doing no more, I'm, I'm finished kind of thing. Um, but the more I've kind of sat and dwelled on stuff, nah, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I'll still take time to make a final decision. But, you know, at, at the minute, you know, I'm already, like I'm dressed now, I'm just about to go and run, so I'm going to go and do a run because I'm, I need to kind of get back at it as soon as I possibly can and I want to already so it's, it's like people put too much stuff on losses and yeah. like as I said I've seen people going no it was, a, it was a bad KO and it's two KOs I wasn't actually KO like the target three and it was a fucking TKO I was dropped and I was dropped it was a good shot but people going it was heavy it wasn't I was getting up you know, if you look I was getting up but you know, it's it's just boxing, isn't it? Like, you know, these things happen. You you get knocked down, you have to get back up again and uh, and go again, I suppose. But you know, I'm all for you know being smart and, and and making the right moves in my career and stuff. And for me, I think you know whatever is next will be the right move. Is it just quickly before we talk about that and continue this bit? You know, the fight itself. What was the game plan going in? Because from the outside looking in, and you'd stress this in the build-up, his biggest strengths would be his biggest weaknesses. And that's what, from the outside looking in, how this guy fights, which, by the way, I think a bit maybe naivety on my part, he was a lot better than I thought he was in the last yeah. Josh. He looked a hell of a lot bigger also, um, I have to say, as well. Yeah, but... listen, improvements. He, he's definitely improved. He definitely improved. And, and... You know, I watched him play the circles before and, and he didn't know how to handle, but he definitely improved. Um, he's definitely got better and, and he was a great fighter on the night, you know. Um, but my game plan was the box and and use my skills and, and, and take it later before I start pressing on. But you know, I just got caught in the firefight right away and just went to went to war. Um you know, he 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 he, he was big in there. Um no, not in height, but in, in size, he looked, he looked, he put on a good bit of beef anyway. But, um, yeah, listen, it was a good fight. He was, yeah, it's not, not something that I expected to kind of play the way I played out, but it's boxing. So, the, you mentioned there, obviously, whatever your next move is will be the correct one. I know you've got, obviously, a care, a very sort of caring family. You have a dad who was in boxing and achieved an awful lot in bringing fighters through. You've, your mum there, your partner, you've got your kids, um, not to sort of count your pockets, but I assume you're financially okay. Is it are they sort of looking at this and going, Look, Michael, you you've you've achieved a lot, kind of thing. You to make sure that this is the right move. Have you had them sort of chats with them yet to say, Look, because I'm sure they don't I, Yeah, I've had them and every single one of them was like, You're all right. They're, They're, not saying that. They're saying you're all right. Whatever decision you make, it's up to you. But we're behind you no matter what. Um, they're not saying stop or anything like that. Like I, I was like, fuck this, you know. It's hard to go through that shit and, and, and take that. And, you know, you get criticized left, right and center no matter what you do. Um, The risk you take and, you know, when I go again or if I go again, I'll get criticized for that. And, you know, this is the thing. You're in a world with people where everybody has an opinion. Like everybody has an arsehole. Not all of them matter. So, um, yeah, listen, I, I, I got stopped 
like a slap back with Fader. And after that, I would say probably just watching her uh, and being in there with him, I would say probably, like, probably one of the best in the division. Yeah. <laughs> no shame in that. I think. Um, but even even from the Warrington fight, I've seen improvements. Man, I've, I've, seen improvements. I've watched that fight with Josh back um, a couple of times before making the trip to Belfast because I sort of had an idea in my head of the fight itself. Um, but you want to make you want to watch and make sure kind of thing. And he looked, um, you know, credit to Josh like in that fight because well, to both hundred percent that I've never seen anyone. I've never seen anyone throw the shots he does, as in from the angles and the back of the room sort of style throws. Like, so I can't imagine yeah. how you prepare for a guy like that. Yeah, he was he was quicker than what I expected. Um. Mm-hmm. But he had faster hands, but even at that, it was just a be honest, it was more on me as I said. You know, it was more on me. I didn't I didn't I didn't stick the game plan, didn't do what I had to do, didn't use my distance. My legs looked like they were fucking stuck in the mud. You know what I mean? And and my legs are my greatest asset and you know, I think I was just an accumulation of uh, of everything, you know, the build up and all the aerobics, the weight, the actual weight on, on the fight night and stuff. You know, it's, I suppose I can fucking go back and forth with my, my own head for as long as I want and still not be happy. Yeah, I can imagine. But how do you... I suppose the tough question you have to ask yourself is, you could fight a bin man down the road and this isn't blowing smoke. You get a good crowd. Yeah? yeah. You get the build-up. You have the epic entrance, which, by the way, was, you know, it was an outrageous kind of thing, like the noise that, you know, these people make. So you're always going to have that pressure. Are you going to have to, do you have to have a, a rethink, maybe look around and make certain changes in order to show the best Michael Conner? I don't know, because like, there was pressure on the Lee Wood fight. You seem to perform in that fight kind of thing, you know, barring. No, nah, like, no, it's not to It's not to yet the pressure, the whole thing. I think, I think it was more my own my own words and putting the, the self touch on. Not there to say pressure, not the, not, the, not the crowd, not the arena, nothing like that. It was the pressure that I was putting on myself and the mindset I was going to put myself that, you know, this is your last chance kind of shit and, and I shouldn't have been giving that mindset. I'm still fucking, I'm still young enough. I'm still fresh enough in the pro game. Um, let's be honest. You know, I've lost twice by, by KO, TKO now. But in terms of stick, I haven't took a lot of stick in this game. I haven't turned, I haven't took a lot of damage in boxing. Um, so it's different. Um, it's different than people who are in wars every week. I'm not in wars every week. Once in a blue moon, I'll be in a war. Um, but that's it. Um, so yeah, it's not not like that. And I seem like well, I seen loads of people criticizing Adam, Adam Booth, yeah. and it's dumb because his game plan was correct. I didn't stick to his game plan, and his tail stop, which was correct, because he was warning me the round before saying listen if you don't fucking change what we're doing here and get back to what we're meant to do I'm going to stop this fight and I was telling him I'm alright he says you better tell me you're alright he says I'm alright um, but I was going out there just with the wrong mindset of just you know kamikaze stay you know going for a fucking tear up and whoever goes goes and then I've seen people like fucking going like he doesn't have the power and all this here to be dealing with that level no place to be fair and take a shot, but he was getting hurt in her body shots. I could hear him fucking making the noises every time he was hitting the body. But at the same time, you know, I'm 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 not known as the biggest puncher in the division, but I've got enough enough to fucking get respect. I know what. And the last four opponents, Bar Lopez all hit the canvas. So it's not like I don't have fucking power and like that. I don't know why I'm just fans the people, but it is what it is. I think um I was gonna come on to the Adam thing because I saw a lot of things online about Adam Boo, this and that, and obviously, we were, we you know, I was there to witness it. You could tell that the corner wasn't happy. So I don't think I think it's very easy. And like I said, if you would have come out today and gone, look, um, we all got the game plan wrong, and you were sort of saying as a team we are just a bit. You're not saying that. You're saying, look, ah, fuck, it was on me. Everything's on me. I, I take ownership. This it was me. Yeah, I'm not me. I lost because I lost, not yeah. because anybody else. And that's the thing, Adam, Adam getting criticised. I'd be looking at baffled people just seem to want to hate on him for, for no reason. Um, because he because Adam will interview and not say too much and is very kind of you know, smart when Parry speaks, people get annoyed with it and, and agitated by it. You're going, these fucking ways up. 
I've but, let him handle things, Harry. He handles things. He's smart. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I saw, that was the sort of takeaway from it when I was talking to you about the game plan and stuff because I wanted to know when you went in there, did you see something else? Because the general consensus was that you were going to come out there and use your feet. And when you didn't, but obviously, I suppose that shows that he actually, how much he actually cares about you that, look, even though you'd, you'd have got up from that punch, you still left to take more punishment. So he's saving yeah. you. No, you want longevity in this game. Yeah. There you go. Like, you've been one. Great stuff. You know, it was a great stuff by him. And, and, and he threw the towel and fair play. And, and even after... I was just like, I was nervous. So like, you know, he he warned me during before he was going to do it. The stop was just a good stop, and and you know I could have got up and could have continued on. Probably wouldn't have got stopped there and then, but it, like I would have been taking some stick. You know what I mean? I think so. You've got obviously now in this sort of space where the next decision you make, whatever it be, would be very very important. So you'll obviously need that time. I think. I keep forgetting now I'm speaking to you now, but it's it's only days away that this this actually mm-hmm. happened. Um, that's why I didn't want to even after the fight. Uh, you won't remember. You were like, "Do you want to do a bit?" And I was like, "No." I do remember in the dressing room. I said, "You see, yeah, like, I'll do a bit." They were like, "No, no, we'll just leave it." Yeah. I was all right. I was like, "In the dressing room, like, I'll speak to me." And no, you remember? So obviously, I would have been happily speak to you, but no I respect you going. No, fuck it, leave it, and we'll do it different time. Yeah, because. After the fight, for instance, like yours, like you were saying, even this, oh, I'm done, done. Today you're going for a run. You've got more of a clearer head, kind of thing. Like it wouldn't mm. have not the right. I don't think it's the right thing to do. Like if it was a close points decision and there'd have been maybe questions over it, like, we maybe could have. But mm. no, nah, like, not not for me. Look, let's not go over it. Um, the occasion, the Belfast, the people came out for you again. I'm sure they'll come out for you again. I mean, you've got to look yeah. at after the the defeat to Lee. You came back against Mariaga. They filled it for you. You mm-hmm. went and fought Gurfe. They filled it for you. I'm sure when you, you know, take stock and have a bit of time out with a clear head, and whenever you feel ready, I'm sure you'll make uh, the correct decision. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go and be on someone's on the card somewhere else for you know, a different for a change. You know what I mean? I'll go away and be on the card in fucking. Kansas City, New York, or fucking wherever it is, however it is. Uh, it'll be, be like fucking, we lived over Hickville, you know, on the card, fighting fucking Joe Bloggs from, you know, down the street. Yeah, maybe. Well, look, um, I suppose final couple of ones from me. I was saying, we mentioned you've got a decision to make, but Heart of Hearts, still think you could become a world champion? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, like it's not. It does like losing again makes you question yourself, but also having the 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 the, the clarity and, and and to know that that wasn't me, that wasn't how I box. And like when I think about it that way, I'm like, nah, I still I still can't, hundred percent I still can't. But I need to turn up. I need to be be me and. I suppose that takes a bit of time. I have to take a bit of time away. I think go oh, three things in my head. It's not done right in boxing. I've done very good in boxing. You know, like in terms of what I what what I what I've what I've experienced, what I've done, what I've earned, everything I got. I've done well. It's not like I'm fucking sitting here struggling or anything. I could walk away if I really wanted to. And that's no joke, I could. But that's the question. Do I really want to? I don't think so. And it's not like I can't sit here and say that no, I, 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 I'm gonna be one of them guys like, like, like Kale, Kale Brook and stuff. When they finish boxing, they, they want to come back. Their, you no, know, their life's not worth it. I don't think that's me. It's not me. It's not like I need boxing. It's not like I, I, I have to have it, or like go through anything. Like it's, I could walk away from boxing in the morning and be all right and happy, like mentally and stuff. But they still know that. There's stuff there for me to achieve, and and I still have a uh, me to do that. Have you um thought about the weight? Have you looked at it and thought maybe weight? Sorry, right. listen, people. Keep, I've seen people talking about this. Like maybe need to move up weight and stuff. Bollocks! Well, like, don't need to move up weight. I made that weight easy. I made that weight easy. I'm not gonna. I'm not I'm not here to make excuses or. You, know, you see loads of these fairs. Loads of them go after oh, lose. Oh, I need to move up. I don't need to move up. I'm good. I'm good at feather. Feather is good. 
Stuart Bantam would be would be fucking hard. I, that would now. If this happened when I was trying to make Stuart Bantam, I'd be there. I'm, I'm moving up, but further it they make it easy. You know, no point in me going super further with them. I'm I'm more right of further with them. You know, there's no problem. Have you um, you a message for all your fans that came out, the people who are gonna mm-hmm. still get behind you when you get back? Because... For only fans. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, nah, it's whatever you do on there it's up to you. The support the other night was was unbelievable, and I'm just. One thing that hurts me is that I didn't get to enjoy it as much as what I wanted to. I enjoyed the walk and all there. Yes, it was unbelievable, and the, and the noise, the noise was fucking crazy. Um, but when you lose, things like this are become kind of irrelevant, and and like when you have that fucking winner's mindset, it's hard to think anything different than just wanting to win and not giving a fuck about anything else. But the support. I always get and they and they come out in their numbers and like tickets were fucking they were like gold dust to get for that fight and and it showed when I was in there the noise showed when I was in there I think that's the best noise I've ever experienced in terms of atmosphere um that was crazy that was crazy again like, not many fighters world champions or not can do it yeah I was just about to say um I think whatever you decide to do next. Your, your sort of legacy as well as like the achievements you've got from the amateur game into the, the pros you've got something that you know 90% of fighters probably haven't got there's a very select few who have what you I'd say, have. I'd, say I'd say in terms of people who box 99% well I've never experienced that I'm probably will never experience that there's a small number of fighters that actually get to experience that type of shit at that level and that, that magnitude so I'm very lucky in that sense, and I'm very grateful because you know what? Since it as well, like I've seen loads, loads of messages getting and saying like, "Please don't quit. We love you. We support you, no matter what." All things they got, things they got. I swear to God, they they mean. Um, saying messages of support. They mean. Yeah, the messages for like you know I I I have read a good few there, and you know it's hard. I always say like it's hard. They read the good of it, reading the bad. So when you read the good and taking the good, you're also taking the bad. But the ones I have read and, and the nice ones, fuck me. Like, you know, people saying, no matter what happens, we still support you and we back you. Please come back. All stuff like that. That's nice. It's lovely to hear. Um, And then when you get them from, like, people who you actually know and, and you know, support and encourage you, it's even, it's, it's even just a nice, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm I'm very grateful, very very grateful in that sense, and I'm grateful. Listen, that my, I'm still healthy, I'm still happy. Um, I'm I'm grateful for Adam Booth because he made the right call, and you know I I left the ring in full health. Um, no problems, no, no fucking anything wrong. You said the first round, actually the first round, a, a shot kind of skimmed my eye or hit me in the eye. Couldn't fucking see it in my left eye. I was like blind at one eye for like a round. I was like, what the fuck? Um, and I was like, no, you know when they have a hair in your eye and you're like blinded, you can't see it. It's all like glazed. That's where my left eye was for ages, for ages, till like two days ago. Like it was still like glazed over. I was like, what the fuck's going on here? But sorry, right, now nah, it's cleared up. Yeah, good stuff. Well, look, let's not keep you too much longer. I appreciate you as always giving giving us some of your time. And you know, it was apart from the fight night. I suppose the result. It was a it was a good week, and I'm sure you'll make a decision. And if you go again, it'll be another good week. And let's see. I think the Michael Conlon journey is still still continuing. There's still more chapters of the story to be written. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. You know, I'll go and I'll have a nice summer break. I'll go away. I'll go to Beth. I'll go to I'll go away with the family, and I'll do a load of things. I'll, I've been away for fucking seventeen weeks. It's been a long time. I've been in a regiment that kind of lifestyle that everything like that. And now the last six days or seven days, whatever it is since the fight, I've had like a fucking pig. I'm about I weighed on what, eight stone or fucking or nine stone, sorry. Um fifty seven kilos. I'm probably about sixty seven now. Look, let's, let's be honest though. Like if you've been through what you've been through, you're you're allowed to fuck. You're allowed to cheat week, my friend. Like, ah, well, that's why I'm going running because I, I don't want to be fat. I, I actually don't want to be fat. I booked myself in for a marathon and stuff as well. 
Oh my god! Oh. I, I never, I, I've never done a full marathon. Done half marathon and stuff. Done my half marathon record is an hour twenty two, and it says that you know the first marathon I actually do, I want to run a sub three hour marathon. So I've got to train for it. Now it's October, um, in Venice in 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 Italy. It was the only one I could get, but I'm going to do a half marathon in Berlin in August, and then I'm going to do a marathon in Italy. And I, I, this was all when I said I was retired, by the way, as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, have, have a break. I, I, was like, I was like, I need, I need something to focus on. So I'm gonna have to get another training program, a sixteen week training program. I'm just run every day now. Yeah, but make sure you do rest, right? <laughs> make sure you have a break. Want, I'll rest once a week, once a week, I'll be a rest. Right. Looks Mark like. Martin starts today. <laughs> Well, I wish you well on your run today, especially after the week from what you've eaten, right? So, um, good luck. We'll catch up again soon when you've got some some more news, I suppose. And you know, one of them things in boxing, you come up short, but you know that's life. Someone has to lose, and I'm sure. As I said yesterday in the post, one loss can't define the rest of your career and what you've done. So, um, you know, I've achieved enough of that in my career. I've, I've done fucking things in my career that no one will probably ever do. Um. 99% of the world would probably never do you know one fucking world I'm juggle mad where no one from Ireland's ever done it so and even the things I've done as a pro you know interim world champion fucking everything else I've achieved place I've fought you know, I, I'm grateful and, and I'm blessed and, and you know people can sit and criticise and say what they want but go and do it knowing go and do it that's all I'll say go and do it and see what you can do at least in, at least in trying that's all you can do, bud. Um, look, mate, we'll catch up again soon. Thanks for giving us some of your time and go and enjoy the rest of your day doing whatever you're doing. Sweet, mate.